uh, just a little bit about me. Um, you know, I've done a whole bunch of uh, about 187 summits. I got a bunch of points. Uh, just got uh, Mountain Goat Award. So I've been doing uh, SOTA since 2017 and then really having a, a great time doing it. Um, just a couple terms I'll hit on this page. Activator. That's the ham operator who climbs the summit, um, gets up there somehow, uh, could be a drive up, and uh, brings their radio station and makes some contacts with other operators, um, either on another summit or um, pretty much just any operator. A chaser is a ham who looks for operators on the summit. Um, let's say you're not like me, I'm working today and I can't you know, really climb mountain, but at lunchtime I can fire up the radio, Look at sodawatch.com and uh, do a little chasing, try to contact operators on other summits. So um, this is the official slide on what is SOTA. Um, Summits on the Air is an award scheme for radio amateurs and shortwave listeners to encourage portable operation in mountainous areas. So, um, and it's been designed so that anybody can do it. You don't have to be a mountaineer. Um, it's not a club, it's a do. It's geocaching for geeks, really, it's, it's, it's the way I think about it. Um, as an activator, you can drive, uh, walk, climb, free solo to a summit, a designated summit, get your four contacts, log them, and you get points. Um, as a chaser, you uh, just all you need to do is find another soda operator that's on a summit and see if you can't contact that person. So, um, and you find them by going to sodawatch.org. Um, just a quick slide on why do it. So, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of guys, I just love it. It just takes my, my passion for uh, hiking and being out in nature and uh, being a geek gives me a reason to get out to summits that I would have or places I would have never thought to go to. Um, it's fresh air, it's great views, and there's no noise floor. Uh, the noise floor is like one or less. Uh, most of the time, that's not always the case. Um, as a chaser, it's fun to uh, chase guys that are on other summits that are you know, out there on five watts trying to get some contacts. Um, maybe they're running CW, and when I was learning CW, it was a really low-risk way for me to just make a quick contact. I know I'm not going to be drawn into a long rag chew, which would be a bit scary for someone learning CW. So there's a couple of reasons. There's a whole lot. What I wanted to get into is um, what is the recipe for doing activations? So in summary, you pick a peak using sodamaps.org, and I'll show you another one. Um, you do a little bit of planning about how you're going to get to the trailhead and get up to the peak. Um, sometimes there's more planning than others. Sometimes you just drive up um, or you just walk the road or trail. Um, you bring your VHF HT. You can use that um, or you set up an HF station and uh, you can use any mode, uh, sideband, uh, FM, CW, DMR, and other digital modes. Uh, there's some folks on here using FT8. Um, you can run any power. You don't have to run QRP. Um, find an open frequency and uh, call CQ or just answer other people. You can just go out and look for other people calling CQ. Um, you spot yourself, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more of that in detail um, in the um, video series, but you just go to a website if you can with uh, either an app on your phone or just go straight to the website and uh, put yourself on there and say, hey, I'm on this uh, mountaintop on this frequency and I'm ready to to, um, to make contacts and I'll tell you you get contacts in just minutes when I first started I didn't use I didn't know anything about this and it was almost comical it took me quite a while to get my four contacts and then when I started spotting myself I had a literal pilot I mean I had it was crazy um, you you get four contacts um, you try some different bands um, you want to be careful on your way down when you're done uh, you want to log those, make sure you exchange your, uh, obviously, your call sign and a signal report. And that's really all the exchange is. That's all you need to do to, to log it. Um, get, down, uh, get down the mountain safely and then log your contacts on sodadata.org. Um, you can upload those. You can enter them one at a time, um, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, certainly, there's no trespassing. You don't want to leave, uh, leave a trace. Use your ninja skills, and uh, number one, have fun. So that's that's the most important thing. Um, as I mentioned, uh, hamninja.com slash soda360 is a how-to video series. So um, I've had a few uh, new soda um, uh, guys tell me that that's been helpful to get them going. 
So let me let me just run through those steps a little bit uh, via the slides. Um, I have the app loaded on my uh, PC, but there's a couple of ways you can find a summit. Um, you can go to Soda Atlas, which is S-O-T-L dot A-S. And this is pretty cool because it instantly shows you um, summits in the area that you have the map zoomed to. And you can tell it to like go to, you know, your house, for example. Um, you can just by pushing this little button in the upper right-hand corner. Um, the numbers on this map tell you how many times that summit has been activated. So if it's zero, um, you may not want to make that your first summit because although it hasn't been activated yet, there may be a good reason why. Um, if it's up on top of the only way to, to do it is to free solo, then that's going to be a little bit tougher. If you see one of a really high count, uh, like 67 over here on the far left-hand side, um, that's probably a drive-up. And so that's going to be a little bit easier. So that kind of gives you a sense. There's another one, which is sodamaps.org. Or, um, there's a, I'll have the URLs at the end here. But this is another tool um, that came out first. This shows you the summits for the area that you want to look at. And the numbers in this case tell you how many points that summit is worth. Um, the ones that have a little red on the box is an indicator that it has not been activated yet. So looks like I need to get up there and activate that guy. I'm currently at my uh, cabin up in uh, northern, northeastern Arizona. And it's about uh, 56 degrees outside. I had, to, I had to tell you guys that. Um, so the next piece is navigate to a summit. Um, I use a, a mapping application. There's several of them out there. There's Gia or Gaia. Um, uh, I use all trails, uh, which really works well for me. I can sit at home, create the map, and then I can bring this up on my phone with the all trails map. Um, there's also another one. Um, oh, shoot. Cal, Cal Topo, which now has a decent app for the phone as well. So there's several out there. Um, so basically, you want to plan your attack. Um, in this particular case, there are no trails to follow. So I use the topo maps and uh, figure out, A, where do I want to start from? So that the red line kind of gets me out to my starting point. And then this purple line indicates um, the path that I chose. This is actually an updated path. Um, it's an improved path that I use because I've been up there and I learned a little bit better way to get to get there. So I updated this map so the next time I uh, went up there um, is I could remember the, a little bit easier way. There's there's several reasons for that. Um, but this happens to be the summit that I uh, exceeded a thousand points on. So at least sort of go to work. Um, the next step is setup. So when you get up there, you, you can whip out your HT and start making contacts, which I've done. Um, but you can set up your antenna on the Far left-hand side is a just a 20-meter dipole. It's it was 20 bucks that I got from. Uh, it's an MFJ wired dipole. It's kind of maddening because you know it's super springy wire. And it's crazy. I didn't know what I was doing, but hey, it worked. And with five watts, I was working a guy in Japan the first time, so I was pretty stoked. The one in the center is a vertical um, antenna made by Chameleon. That thing um, is. Pretty cool because you can set it up in really high winds in about 10 minutes. And, and I've had it where it's really bent over in high winds, and it works great. And uh, that's why I was running my uh, 891 into that because it's a multi-band antenna. And then on the far right-hand side, um, <laughs> you can see that I've, I've taken an Aero Yagi antenna. I used um, painter's tape um, because I had forgotten to go out to Home Depot and get some parts. So I just whipped out some painter's tape taped it to my hiking pole and used that hooked up to my HT. And I was getting contacts up there from Stonewall Peak uh, over in San Diego. So um, there's all kinds of setups that you can do. There's an infinite number. Um, the next one is activating using HF or VHF UHF. So on the far left-hand side, I was using an 891 like some of you guys have, running QR, uh, QRO, full power. Um, I've done a HT only and, and this the middle one is just, I was doing a DMR. And I said, hey, I want to activate this only with DMR. So I was getting some DMR simplex contacts with that. And then on the far right hand side is, um, I think that's me last Sunday. 
activating up on uh, a peak that hadn't been activated before over in New Mexico, running uh, my KX2 and uh, CW. So you can use also use digital modes, as I mentioned. Um, one contact gets you the, quote, activation, but you don't get any points unless you get you put uh, four contacts in the system. Um, you'll laugh, but there were a few. When I first started out, I thought you only needed three. I wasn't getting points. I was trying to figure out why. <laughs> so uh, if I can help somebody avoid that, that's all good. Um, so some of the top activators, they can use two radios at once. So this is Adam K6ARK, and he's running CW off his mountain topper there with his custom antenna and uh, talking into his uh, VHF radio at the same time. That guy is – you don't get double points, by the way, Adam. Just want to let you know, but that's a, a pretty cool trick. You All remember right. who I was talking to, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I interrupted Adam in the middle of his activation, and thanks for rubbing that in. Yes, he was talking to me. I was on the other side of this peak with him. We were having a great time up there. Um, so you ruined the story, man. <laughs> I was trying to make it out to where you were, you were multitasking. You're just that good. Okay, so that really kind of covers the activation part. It, and, and again, this is just very high level, but just to give folks that are new to it, you know, what, is, what does this look like? Um, for chasers, um, I wanted to just run through this really quick. Um, chasing, you can chase from a, um, from a summit as well. And I really enjoy getting summit to summit. So I'll chase from a summit when I can. Um, but I need to have data um, because I can't find other um, soda operators on summits. There are a few places where they hang out um, that you can, if you can dial around if you don't have data. But uh, if I have my phone with uh, cell access, then I can uh, do a little chasing. So let's talk about that really quick. How do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. You uh, fire up your HD, HF, or, and computer. Um, whatever uh, radios you have uh, at your location could be in your shack or on a mountaintop. You monitor sodawatch.org for spots. So what you're looking at on the right-hand side is a listing of sodawatch.org uh, spots. And you'll see that I'm, I highlighted myself there, but I was on a, a summit at that time, in Whiskey 6 CT 172. I don't know what summit that was. But I was in uh, 7 on, on sideband on 7.277. So if you saw me, you would, you would say, oh, hey, Chris is up there right now. He's calling CQ. Um, dial it up and see if you can hear me. If you can hear me, um, then wait your turn. Tune in, listen. If the activator... The activator typically runs the show, and if you, once he, you have the spot, then uh, give, give that operator a call, exchange your call sign, and signal report. They have to have your signal report to kind of make the contact legal. And uh, then you uh, just log your summit for points at sodadata.org.uk. And I'll talk about why you would want to do that in just a couple minutes. So um, then you go and look for the next contact. So at the very top there, you see it's N1CLC, and then you say, okay, I got that guy. Maybe I'll go to this guy. Um, maybe you can't hear this person, so you go to the next one. Um, if, you, if you know CW, um, this is a really good, uh, or if you're learning, certainly, uh, this is a really low-risk way of uh, just all you need to do is be able to send your call sign uh, when you hear the other person finish the previous contact. Listen for your call sign. If the person answers back with your call signs, all you need to do is respond back with UR5NN. And um, you just sent the other person his signal report, 599, and you just got your CW contact. I actually learned that from Adam, K6ARK, who helped me get started. So um, <laughs> one of the reasons why uh, that I learned uh, that people are using CW is Man, going to CW with 10 watts is like running 100 watts from Mount Everest. It's really, really awesome. So you can really lighten your load by going to CW. Um, there hasn't been a time when I did not activate um, a, a summit with 10 watts in CW. It's pretty amazing. So it's really a um, – the other thing I really enjoy doing is getting a lot of summit-to-summit -summit contacts. Well, you got to know CW to get that. Um, so – but you don't need to know, you know, you don't have to be, you know, super fast or anything else. And I just want to say that people always slow down for you. Um, so let's let's go through that step by step. Um, we said fire up your equipment. 
you want to find an activator, um, this is sodawatch.soda.org.uk. Um, this is actually a newer version than what I was showing on that previous screenshot. But um, I took this, uh, looks like probably late at night. But here's a, a few soda activators, and all you'd have to do is just tune up on them and uh, see if you can get them. Um, you'll notice that some of them also run uh, uh, VHF, UHF as well. The other one to use, you can also use Soda Atlas. You just click on spots here. I uh, highlighted that. And um, then you can find uh, activators. So you can use either application. Um, they both sit there and just kind of regenerate. This I usually have this up on my PC when I'm... Uh, working and if I'm not in a meeting then maybe I jump on the radio really quick and chase them. So and the last one is uh, you tune up, listen, and attempt to contact. Um, Michael asked me to send uh, some pictures of me uh, chasing and what's funny is I don't do a whole lot of chasing and well the pictures aren't that exciting. <laughs> but um, I guess the thing to remember here is the activator runs the show. Um, summit to summits, if you hear someone yelling summit to summit, and trying to get a contact, those guys generally get priority. Um, exchange signal reports uh, to log the contact. And um, uh, the one important thing to, uh, to say is if you can't hear the activator, um, I, don't know how much, I don't care how much power you have, it's not gonna help you. <laughs> you have to be able to help, uh, hear them. Although I will, I will listen for a long time and, and sometimes call in the blind and see, see if the activator is still on the mountain. So, um, Here's a couple of chasing tools that are really handy. Um, one is Ham Alert, which I have on my phone, and it hits my Apple Watch. Um, you can set up alerts, not only for your friends that are gonna be on summits, but you can also set it up for a particular area. For instance, you live next to W6CT, and anybody up there using an HD um, will, um, uh, you generally can contact. So you can set up alerts, So Anytime somebody's in there, you'll you'll get a little buzz in your phone or what have you. So it's it's kind of a handy tool. Um, you'll see the triggers are on the left hand side, and then the ham alerts are on the right. So just uh, something in there. Um, you upload your contacts to get points. Uh, I mentioned that I'd show you why you would want to do that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, up to soda data. I'm not going to go through that here, but there's um, uh, several ways you can do it. You can do it one at a time or upload a little uh, data file. Um, so I'm going to show just really quick here. Where is my, I can get out of this presentation mode. Um, okay, so here's maps. Uh, so one of the cool things, if you do as an activator, if you um, upload your contacts, you can go to mapping and then activation mapping page. And this is pretty cool because it gives you a visual picture of, of your activation. So this is kind of a, uh, an incentive to upload your uh, contacts and get your points. Um, so it's pretty cool. And um, it's always fun to kind of go back and, and see you know, where the contacts were, et cetera. So here's one on a New Mexico. Uh, let's see, was that in New Mexico? This one's in New Mexico. Both these are New Mexico summits. I'm right next to the New Mexico border, so I've been doing a few. Um, and I was lucky enough to get uh, John uh, over in New Zealand there. So he is a prolific chaser. Uh, generally in the afternoon, if you're on a summit, um, John may be trying to chase you. So uh, listen out for uh, uh, ZL1BYZ. Um, the other thing in the SOTA database is you can get all kinds of info. Here's the top activators in California. Um, you could look at the ones in uh, Colorado, et cetera. Um, there are a few more slides uh, that I have uh, uh, load out um, uh, that I cover. You can take a look at this. You can take a look at my website also. Um, um, I have a page here on uh, hiking safety if you want to take a look at this. But what I wanted to do is just turn this back over to uh, Michael and, and or to the group and uh, see if there's any questions. Um, again, you can go out and see the full presentation at um, – uh, hamninja.com forward slash presentation and uh, uh, certainly if anybody has uh, out in the clubs or uh, anywhere else has a uh, would like me to present this uh, to their club or just has any questions please feel free to reach out to me my
email address is current and on QRZ.